the not so sexy side of RV life. Yep, and we're gonna share that with you right now. <laughs> what does that actually mean though? What is not so sexy about RV life? All those little things, those little uh, maintenance things that we haven't been keeping up on that we should because we've just been on the go, on the go, on the go. Yeah, what she's politely saying is, I broke our wine guard switch, yeah. our ring alarm on our door quit working, and yeah. I've got a dirty bathroom vent and three dirty AC vents. Yay, so guess what we get to do today before the football game? We better get this crap done quick. Hold on, let's go for a ride. I swear he's not just playing on my phone. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, kind of. I am playing on your phone. I'm working through the sensor. So our front door sensor quit working. And for whatever reason, um, I did everything. I changed batteries. I disconnected it from the system. I've done everything. The darn thing took a dump on us. It didn't work. So I had to go online and order a new one. I don't know where I set it. This is a hot mess. There it is. Okay. So we're going to have to go back through, play the game with Ring, and allow it to connect. Come on, QR code. Good Lord. All right. So we're going to add this one back in. Let's pull the sensor apart. This better work, otherwise we're gonna look stupid on camera. <laughs> While he's doing that for context, we do use the ring alarm system that we purchase. Yeah, there's nothing sponsored about this. This is just us. Um, two different things. One, it's of course a security thing, but uh, it's also for the dog. We wanna make sure that if anybody opens the door, the dog doesn't get out, the dog being our beloved Callie. All right, that was it. Really, all I had to do is scan the QR code, um, QR code, go to main door, and where is this? We're going to say, mm, I don't know. Living room? Let's go with, uh, I'm gonna, well, I'd prefer to do a custom. Here we go. Let's do a custom. We're going to just call this the front door. Front That's because we're very creative. Well, you know. I. <laughs> Sometimes simplicity is best. Success. Woo! All right, now let's go to the dashboard. Here's the real success. We'll see. Here we go. Devices, alarm, and we should see something on here that says front door. Front door closed. All right, let's test this. Oh, front door open. Show me the screen again. Front door closed. Yep. All right, so it is working. Honeydew, number one down. Let's go over here. So this is the most important tool in RVing. It is a dollar store butter knife that I bought Christopher because he kept using my butter knives from the drawer. And the reason this is important to me, come on up here. The Coleman Mock, or maybe all of them, I don't know, but I can only speak to the Coleman Mock. These vent covers right here, are a little bit of uh, a little gentle, we'll say, or delicate. So delicate, finicky. Finicky. So I come in here and I put this in. Oh. Let me see why I use a butter knife. There you go. And I pop it out with the butter knife to avoid damaging the vent. So that comes out quite easily. Use the butter knife on the same thing on the other side. Now. I'm going to do that on all three of our ACs. And the reason why, let's see if we can get a little contrast here. See that? Yeah. That okay. is dirty. We're going to go outside and show you how we clean these off since we don't have the residential ones yet. I would love to get one that has the residential insert so that we can quit with the dust. If you have any recommendations on residential ones, let us know down below in the comments. Absolutely. And just as a gee whiz, if you guys aren't checking this frequently, um, highly recommend it. They get dusty and it just makes it hard for your ACs to breathe. So you wanna make sure that you don't have anything that's obstruction obstructing the airflow within the ACs. They're just more efficient when they can breathe. And sometimes this can get really, really gross, uh, especially if you're in a dusty environment, like when we were in the desert in Arizona, um, or if you have a pet like Callie, she adds to the fun. Yeah, and we were just at the Florida RV Super Show camping at the fairgrounds, and it was windy, dusty. Right. So be mindful of where you've been at. And right now we are at Camp Margaritaville, and it is super windy outside. And I don't want to hear any crap about it. We're here filming RV Unplugged Season 2. 
We've heard the comments, y'all. You're always there. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. See, there's Kent Margaritaville. All right. Let's see, I got the day shades down. There we go. Martha's trying to hide from the people's. I tell you what, if you have not got the MCD day shades, highly, highly, highly recommend it. And the reason why we had a peep and Tom looking through our window at one of these rallies and that person shall not be named, but now they can't see in if they're around. His name wasn't Tom, was it? No, it was not Tom. I was going to say, because we know a couple Toms and they've never been peepers that I don't know. <laughs> No, but it, it, it gives you privacy and it lets the daylight in and the heat stay out. Yeah, but uh, now at night you're still a fishbowl with them down. So that's if you when do, you, put... you definitely, if you go down that path, you don't want to uh, expect them to give you privacy. Yes, and that's where the nightshades come in. You just pull those down. All right, we'll start with these. So so that's two. We're going to start with these, then we'll go do the, the other one later. They don't want to watch all that. That gets a little boring. <laughs> now, let's see how this plays out. Look at this. I had already set my stuff out and prepped, but I forgot. <laughs> all right, we're going to test out these new mics while we're here. As you can tell from my shirt wiggling, it is freaking windy out here. So let's my, see how it sounds. And my hair flying. Someone cued the wind machine. All I use is a little soft bristle brush. I just run it over the top of it, knock the dust off on both sides. Really actually easy. I do that on three of those. Actually, I'm sorry. It's four of them because there's one on each side, but. I think it, when you meant three, the three ACs. Well, that's what I meant, yep. <laughs> See, I speak Chris and I understand. Well, look how clogged that is. Yes. Those things are dirty, so. Chris was a bad guy and did not finish his job. Is that one dirty too? Yeah, that one's still a little dirty. Oh, I'm gonna have to wipe that down. It's got like buildup or something on it. It's got a little staining. All right, so put your uh, microphone over here, or put your camera over here and watch this. So this is what I'm, this is what I wanted to point out. So these, the little soft bristle brush does a really good job of cleaning this off without damaging anything. Just make sure you don't do this uh, upwind of your neighbor in the RV park because, you know, probably yeah. frowned upon throwing dust on their trailer. And the sun's finally peeking out a little bit and we are wearing eye protection. Because safety first, y'all. Safety first. I don't know. Mike Rowe says safety third. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's a clean one now. Yeah, let's put it next to a dirty one. There you go. Oh, yeah. See the difference? I do. I see the difference. Hopefully y'all see the difference. If you see the difference, let us know down below in the comments. But man, I hope this is showing up. It's gross, for it sure. It is gross. And if you have seasonal allergies or dust allergies, this is going to help a lot too. Well, that's where, like I said, they, there are some options out there that are actually like a residential cover that you can put residential filters on. I would like to have a HEPA filter where it actually was an allergen filter versus these are more like large particles, almost dust filters. That one wasn't bad. No. So windy. <laughs> <laughs> I know everything's flying away. You might want to show them that there's nobody behind us and we're not being those neighbors. Okay. So we have an insight and we actually love it because we get more privacy over here. We have a neighbor on our off door side, but that is it. So Chris says, this is so easy that anyone could do it. And guess what? He's like, here you go, babe. You're not anyone, you're my wife. This is true. No, I don't, honestly, I don't mind helping out. I have a great teacher that has taught me a lot about RV life and it's fun. Plus, I don't know I like about a great breathe. teacher. We just fake it till we make it and then we <laughs> document it. <laughs> Plus there are times when he's on a work trip or something and if I need something done, I need to know how to do it. So 
Plus teamwork makes a dream work, right? Right, absolutely. And I mean, honestly, this is just, these are the little things that make all the difference so you're not overworking your AC. It's important just to take care of things. Make it, you know, if we had to run a marathon breathing through a straw, we'd probably fall over and die. I just kind of equate it the same with the ACs. If the ACs are trying to breathe through a straw, they're not gonna do what you want. They're not gonna cool as much as you want. Simple thing, brush it off and you're done. Yep, that easy. All right, let's go put these inserts back in. Now, when you put those back in, do you use your dollar store butter knife? You mean the most important tool in RV? Yes. I do. Here, I'll set that down and I'll show you why. So I put it right here on the edge and then I just push it back in and then it drops into place and it doesn't mess up the tab on the AC and it doesn't mess up the vent. So as long as you, same thing, I just push it in here on that side, just set it in and the tab is right here. Lean it in, done. Make that look easy. It's because I have the most important tool in all of RV. <laughs> and this is something we definitely try to keep up on. It is. And say, I'll do the same thing here. I just put it in and I push it back just to get it in place. Same thing on this side, push it back, get it in place. And it keeps that from cracking. Um, I know over time these things can get brittle. I no doubt about it between uh, hot, cold, humidity, and everything else, I'm sure plastic will not last forever. And you definitely want to listen for that little click in place so it doesn't fall during travel days. Uh, speaking for a friend, right? I we, don't think ours have, have they? No, uh, um, they haven't. We've been pretty good about it. But that's it. There you go. So I'm going to repeat that two more times on the back. Off to the next project. Next thing, vent. So the Max Air Fan. These things get quite dusty. So I tried to pull it down. No such luck. So I'm going to have to pull off the cover, of course, because we put this exterior cover on it to block the light. Well, you know, maintenance time, guess what? Off to work I go. Good thing is it's only four screws. Give myself a 50% chance of hitting myself in the head with this thing. Let me plug, let me plug the sink. Aha, nailed it. Okay. So let's show them how this goes in. So if you have a Max Air fan, you'll know how to take it apart. I tried to cheat and pop it down ahead of time. Like I said, I got the cover, so well, that didn't work. But if you have a Max Air fan, you're gonna cuss at it because I'm gonna die. And some safety goggles. I probably should as far as dust goes, good Lord. Okay. Super dusty. Can you see what I'm wiggling here? So these little things right here, turn. They have four little clips that turn and then see if I can get you an angle to see how nasty that is. It's really, 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 really dirty. Really so dirty. come in here and show the inside of this. So this is also really dirty too. See? Yeah. We're going to grab some wipes and we're going to clean this out. We're going to clean this out. Uh, this one we're going to cheat. We're going to use our Dyson vacuum that has a little brush on it and I'll show you how I suck this out. But really important just to keep airflow again. You don't want to burn up the 12 volt motor so don't let this get full. Yeah we bought our Dyson vacuum almost three years ago from Costco when it was on sale. Keyword <laughs> bought. Keyword bought not sponsored. Get in close while you're grabbing the vacuum. It is so dusty. I don't think we've ever cleaned this out. Uh, I have, but only from the exterior, not from the interior. So I haven't taken it apart like I did right now. Um, I've just used the vacuum on the outside to suck it out. But what you see on the inside is why I decided I really wanted to uh, pull the vacuum out and get at it. So this little Dyson, like Martha said, came with a, um, all these attachments. Came with all the attachments from Costco. So I'm going to try to make life easy what here. And That didn't work. But we should empty the... It didn't work. It didn't work. Huh. Is 
So microfiber. Nope. I'm going to go with spray. I'm going to use Windex or whatever. Glass cleaner. Spray glass cleaner and paper towels. Right. Because I don't want a bunch of moisture up there, but I think the dust will stick better to a wet rag. Okay. And then I'll just go a blade at a time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's, let's show how, look at the difference on the one blade here that I cleaned versus all the other ones. So it's significant. All right, let's repeat this a whole bunch of times. Wash leather. Rinse, rinse and repeat. repeat. Come on now. We know how to wash our hair. <laughs> all right, Martha, what'd you find? I found a clean fan. No, let's talk about what you found all the way up in the top corner there. Can you zoom in there? Yeah, I got to get the right angle. Okay. So as we were cleaning this, we're inspecting it, and what did you find? I found a couple cracks in the cover. cover. The vent cover has cracked where it is molded. So there. I'll put an arrow up with your finger. Oh. Uh, well, now we're going to have to order a new vent cover, which is surprising that it's cracked there because we actually have the Max Air like cover over the top of our vent cover. So you wouldn't think like any UV damage. There's been no impact damage. So I'm going to have to go on the roof, pop the cover off, figure out what's going on. Now, from a replacement standpoint, super easy. Four little screws. Come on in here. You can put the arrows up. So there's a screw on the left and a screw on the right, both forward and back. So those four little screws there are all I have to do to replace the vent cover. So it's just a matter of ordering a new cover. But this is why we do maintenance, right? So if we find something like that, we can get the part, get it fixed before we end up with something that's more of a catastrophe, like if our vent cover falls off and it's raining on us. Yeah. Let's go clean. Same technique. You can see the nasty there. We decided to take this insert out because there was a lot of dust in there too. All the dust is out though. We've been really happy with this product. Um, I think it's a Bauer product, right? It is. It's from Bauer, which is the lock company. Uh, it's the company that actually Lipric contracts with. I think uh, almost all the major manufacturers contract with to do their locks on their RVs. I know it's what uh, Alliance uses from the factory. So, so with the uh, glue on the top, we opened everything up. So I removed the insert, which is this piece here. I'm going to put that there, try to wedge it. Uh, also remove the fan. So Martha did a really great job of cleaning this. Uh, the fan is super easy to remove. It's held on by one little screw. Let's turn it and then this way. It's really hard to see. There we go. Hold it. Got it? Got it. All right. So it's held on by that little screw. The problem is where the stinking little screw is makes it extremely difficult to get in there because it's kind of recessed by the lip. So I'm using a Allen wrench bit just to get it started and held in place because I didn't bring my Allen wrench set. All I have is this, which uh, is an Allen wrench set, but it, it does the job in most cases, but if you need something a little longer, a bit and a pair of pliers. So this is going to be a little redneck Allen wrench set here. So all I'm doing is uh, tightening it. And because I'm not going to go crazy on it, there you go. I'm using the pliers and the bit. So got to do what you got to do. Redneck engineering. Hey, that's RV life for you. You just got to adapt and overcome. Adapt, improvise, and overcome. I think I heard that somewhere. Oh, yeah, Air Force. <laughs> so let's test the fan. So if I stick my tongue in there, will it hurt? I do believe so. Okay, the fan is, what I'm looking at, I don't know if you can kind of see here, I'm just making sure the fan's not wobbling, that I put it in straight so that you don't get any issues with that. Looks good. So as you saw, we went on the roof, mm -hmm. put the two-part epoxy on the stress fractures in there, but I think Chris and I are going to go ahead and get a replacement cover and have that ordered. So let's put this all back together. But it was, even though it's a little bit of a, uh, we'll call it a minor inconvenience to go on the roof and do the uh, glue, it's going to save us a headache because 
I can't stress enough how important it is to keep water out of the trailer. And if we wouldn't have caught that, potentially it could have been a problem. And that's all there is to that. So just twists in place under normal circumstances, that would be the extent of it. Uh, for us, we have the cover. I think we did it this way. Yes. So put that back in. Good call, Martha. <laughs> I just pushed the little drain hole plug down so we don't accidentally lose the screw. So we're going to hold it here. I'm just lining everything back up. There we go. Okay, on this side. Sure. Okay. See, teamwork. And this was a really easy install to put this insert in when we first got it. Yeah, and we really like it. Um, not sponsored, we paid for it. Yeah, because before we had that little cushion looking thing in here, but it just kind of looked tacky. So let's close the vent. There you go. All right, well that took way longer than expected. We've got one more project to go. Let's go for a walk. What you got there, Chris? The last project on the honeydew list today. So this is a wine guard power switch. This controls both your antenna, so for your AM FM radio, and for Wi-Fi. So those are all your connections. And why are we doing this? Yeah, why? Because I broke it. All right, let's go show them what you broke outside. <laughs> I feel like you might have paid a stupid tax for this. Well, you know, every good story starts with there I was, but this one was really, I just opened the wall up and didn't pay any damn attention and just yanked and I broke it. <laughs> the best part about it is it was a $15 part with $17 in shipping. Yay. And it's like flashbacks of Alaska. <laughs> for context, I'm from Alaska. We live there. Chris was stationed there with the Air Force and shipping is always so expensive because I think some companies believe that Alaska is not part of the United States. I can't count how many times we were told that. That was hilarious. Well, we only shipped to the U.S. Well, last time I looked, it was a state. 49th state. Then it's like, oh, the continental U.S. So everybody but you see Alaska discrimination. I see a hole. Let's not talk about holes there, right? You know, we'll get around to it. So that's the cable for our Starlink. Yeah. The gray. So here's... Whoop, I can't even get it out. All right, we're going to have to just unscrew it. Well, this is what it should look like, but that's what it looks like. So we're going to open this up real quick and uh, fix this problem that I caused... Look at that, fancy, huh? That is fancy. That's so that... how it's supposed to be. I'm curious, do you still have the broken one? I do, and I'll be pulling it out, but I'm gonna do a wire at a time. So that's a really smart way to do it, is transferring it wire by wire so you know you got the right connections. Am I correct? Yes, I'm doing that on purpose. So I know it's hard to see back here where I'm working, but what I'm doing is going one at a time, uh, right to left, just because I coincidentally happen to be going that direction. The good thing is from an electrical standpoint, I know some of you guys are probably thinking like, why am I not disconnecting the power? Uh, this is all 12 volt, so I'm not too concerned about it as far as like electrocution or anything like that. So Chris is certified in solar through the NRVTA and he's done the RV Tech Fundamentals course and plus he's mechanically inclined. So definitely educate yourself before working on your coach. Yeah, because you don't want to just go cutting wires and find out, oops. What I'm messing with right here is just a coax cable. So it's basically television cable. Um, we, we don't use it at all, but. But this is one of those things where Chris broke that switch and he wants to make sure that we have one that functions. So if we ever do decide to use it, it'll be functional and not have to wait on a part. Or if we ever decide to sell the trailer, you know, the person gets it getting, is getting exactly what they got from the factory, which is a fully functional 
trailer that'll work with like satellite TV, cable TV, things like that. Yeah. And you guys know us, we don't want anything sitting around broken when we could just easily fix it. This is the back end of what I put in. This is the electronic portion of it. This is what it should have looked like instead of just having a hole of getting ready to put the cover on. So now that this is in place, that's been removed, we're in good shape. I noticed you had to cut one of those. Uh, yeah, the uh, wire did not want to spin for whatever reason. So it was being a little bit of a headache. So. I cut it. It didn't matter because I cut it on the um, on the side of the harness, not on the side of the wire on the trailer. So pulled it off. I also broke it coming out. Oh no! Nah, it don't matter. That was all on the other side. So now that <laughs> this is all back together, life is heading in the right direction. This should be my last honeydew for the day. And after this, what are we gonna do? We are gonna watch football. That's right. Yay, football. Yay, football. Can you explain to everybody that you're, what, you're, uh, what the expectations are? You are a 49ers fan by? Oh, I'm a 49ers fan by marriage. So when Chris and I got together in the late 1900s in 99, <laughs> we barely squeaked in there. Uh, he asked me who my football team was, and I said, I don't have a football team because I grew up watching baseball with my dad and brothers. So he said, you are now a 49ers fan. That is correct. So, yay, football. All right, let's put this back together and go inside and finish the video out because I just got to put the wall up and everybody knows how to put four screws in a wall. If you're wondering what Chris was looking at, we are right in front of the propane and there's our friend Kevin. You're going to see a lot more of Kevin because he's going to be on season two of RB Unplugged and he's getting prepared. We approach this a little bit different. Tell us what you think. Yeah, let us know. So, do you clean your AC vents? Have you cleaned your max air vents? <laughs> Do you guys stress cracks like we did? <laughs> so these these little projects today took a lot longer than we thought. So. But we wanted to show you reality, right? The yeah. not so sexy side. That's what we said. So let us know down in the comments what you think. Absolutely. And don't forget, like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And enjoy every moment.